All right, Gabriel out here coming at you with another tier list. We're gonna switch it up a little bit today. We're not gonna go through it in order this time. We're gonna jump around, keep you guessing. You'll never know which which clan is gonna show up next. Today we got Umbra to kick off the uh, uncommon tier here. I thought we'd start on a sour note. So Umbra set up set it in the common tier Umbra video video uh, video. Uh, that I am not entirely sure Umbra is the worst clan in the game. Just object, kind of, power across the board level. I'll reiterate that they feel the worst, and that if you go with a morsel game plan each time, you will not win a good percentage of the time. I'm confident of that. All that being said, the uncommon rarity is not, I repeat, not a strength of the Umbra clan. This is almost as bad as their banners, if not about as bad. Uh, now that sucks too, right? Because ring four, ring five, and ring seven, you're ma majority of the time getting just uncommons there. That's what you get. And I can't tell you how many times it's just a skip with Umbra. So many times it's just a skip, and that can hurt. Um, it really hurts when you're looking to add some power level to your deck, and you just can't. I, there's, you'll see it at the end here. We'll, we'll we'll go over it all once it's all said and done. But it's just a sad, sad pool here at the uncommon tier for Umbra. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll just get into it here. So uh, first things first, cannibalize. I I think this card sucks personally. Um, every now and then, like once in the rarest of blue moons, it can be what you need. It can be good, uh, particularly with Melting Remnant sometimes. But in reality, not really. Um, problem is, if, if you're so deeply into an, a Melting Remnant uh, game plan, you're probably not really into Morsels as a game plan, so like... The Morsels now become a liability because they're entering your reform pool. Now maybe you're running Molded's and that doesn't matter. But maybe you're running Dark Calling, maybe you're running... Uh... From Molds. And then it's absolutely an issue. As, as Unless you can eat them that turn. Which maybe you can, maybe you can't. I find a lot of the time you, you can't really. Especially against like Divinity. But for the record, as a Sacrifice card, it's nice to have targeted Sacrifice. It might be okay sometimes also uh, just to get your tomb sacrificed or an imp sacrificed with Hellhorn. But that's about all I can say Good, that's good for it. It costs an ember for some reason. You have to have a sacrifice target. That's the biggest downside, obviously. I mean, within clan, it makes no sense. Like, it's at best just kind of like a... Maybe you just put down a morsel and then turn it into better morsels with this. That's still basically two, like like assuming you're just doing like a shade splitter and comboing with it. That's two ember and two cards for three kind of random morsels that you can't even really predict what will come out. You know they'll be the good tier. There's not going to be any rubber morsels, but beyond that you don't know. So I think it's bad, personally. Uh, I really don't think it's a good card, and I'm almost always skipping it and regretting it when I add it. And then, uh, next one we got here is even worse, Cave-In. Now, for the longest time, especially pre-DLC, it was kind of a running joke that I would say, uh, you know, Cave-In is the best card in the game. I was never being serious, but it was, it's, so it's always been bad, right? It's just been a joke of a card, but I can't even joke about it anymore. I can't even call it the best card in the game because it, it's just, it's so incredibly bad now. Like, I don't know why this thing continues to cost two Ember. I could maybe see it being okay at one. Then you can realistically, with some consistency, if you find hold over on it, that might give you an additional way to make morsels work on the mid floor. You can just overstack some morsels. It's still gonna cost you an ember and a card, you can ember upgrade it, but you know, it is nice that you can upgrade things for 25 gold, you know, ember, but at the same time, 
there's a cost there that isn't really being always talked about, which is you could have put that on something better, right? So is it really worth it to put Amber upgrades on Kaven? Currently, I would say no. Not at two cost. Maybe at a one cost, you can justify it as kind of just a makeshift. F it's it's. I mean, let's put it this way. Even even with that, it's generally going to be worse than a holdover feast, which isn't even that good. I I would argue you bring it down to zero Ember. Um, at least then now it's an okay card. I still don't think it's even that good of a card at zero cost, but. At least then you can slap a hold over it. Even if you don't slap hold over, it's one of those low investment cards that you don't have to upgrade necessarily, and it'll cost zero. Could be an okay permafrost target. At that point, you can use it as kind of a tech card, or as I said, just a way to get morsels on the floor, or to overstack a mid floor. Now you got a pretty decent card at that point, but at two cost, it is an absolute joke of a card. So fucking bad. Um, one of the worst cards in the game. Definitely probably a top five worst card in the game. That's there's there's gonna be a few of those here. You get honest I, I could argue almost everything I put in the D tier for Umbra's on common tier is some of the worst cards in the game. And the next one, it's another bad one, but I, I wouldn't say it's D tier. It has uses. Um, just sort of objectively worse than Space Prism, which is hilarious, right? But um if for some reason replaying it uh, is a thing you need to do, which with a pip upgrade I find is rarely, rarely, rarely ever the case, but if for some reason you do, then it technically has a minor advantage over space prism. It still costs, you know, twice as much ember. Well, no, infinitely as much ember, because it's zero ember space prism, and this is two ember, so way more cost to get it going, but if you do need space extension and you didn't hit on space prism, you might be able to find this and make it work. So it does have some uses, but man, it sure is overcosted in my opinion. I mean, look, compare old magic. The, I mean, granted, old old magic is OP, but still, like, you can get an old magic that does this and like two other really good things for one ember. So Crucible Extension sucks, but it's in the in the context of Umbra uncommons, it's C tier. It's probably D for most other classes, clans even. Then we got Amber Cash, the mysteri the mis one of those just mysteriously nerfed cards. I don't know why. It's it's okay. Um, there are definitely runs where it's pretty good, but it was much much better when it just costed zero, and there really wasn't a downside. You know, it was a nice tech against Diligent. It was just a nice card to basically say, hey, I'll pay a draw for one of my opening turns just to have a nice second draw through. But now it actually costs Ember. And like I said, yeah, for 25 gold, you can get it down to zero, but that's 25, you know, that's, that's, you know, you only have so many Ember upgrades you can make, and that could have went somewhere else instead. So, I guess maybe they thought it was too easy to have Impotence or something with Wormkin? Maybe. I mean, you can still get pretty much, it doesn't really matter. If you have the Wormkin consume return, you'll get a pseudo-infinite with this anyway, but, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it could stand to be unnerfed. Not that it's... I don't think it's a bad card. I, I do think it's good. I, I actually even toyed about putting it in the A tier. I think because it costs 1, I, I still say it's B. At zero cost, it was definitely an A tier card, though. Uh, not S. It's a nice card to have. I just... I, I think it's often just still not necessarily worth including in a lot of decks. I do think if I see Diligent, I almost would never skip it straight up unless I really thought I had... Uh, the answer is already to Diligent. But in a general sense, I think it's takeable a lot of the time. But not necessarily making sense in a lot of decks. It's certainly really good in like incant decks or uh, decks that can really make use of the Excavated Embers. And now we have... I, I actually do think, all things considered, it, I do actually think this next card is the worst card in the game. The single worst card in the game. That's Ember Forge. The reason it's the worst card in the game is it's the only card in the game that I've never had be relevant in a run in my 2k hours of playing this game. I'm not even exaggerating there. I cannot think of a run where this fucking card did anything. It's so fucking bad. It is useless. It absolutely needs to be redesigned. Um, I don't know why this card exists in its current form. It used to be even worse, believe it or not. Can you fucking believe that? But anyway, it costs... 
I mean, uh, where do I even begin? Why is this 3 pip, first of all, and it has like a measly 20 or 25 health? That's an absolute choke. Um, you can't even like put it down. It, 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 you can't justify it on any floor. How can you justify this on any floor? 3 pip? For measly 2 ember a turn? It doesn't even, it doesn't even get around ember drain. Like, it doesn't generate it like after you've been ember drained or anything. So, what the hell use is this card? It's so bad. It doesn't tank. It's a horrible use of pip. It's not even a priority draw. It doesn't give Ember in a way that's like that relevant to what the uh, that, like the cost here is. The infusion also sucks. Although I will say I've used the infusion at least sometimes because I had nothing better to do and it was okay. It's technically you think it would be a good infusion, but in practice it just isn't. Um, yeah, this card sucks. It sucks so bad. I do actually think it's the worst card in the game. Uh, I can't think of another card that is as non-impactful as as Ember Forge. So, on the other side, Engine Upgrade's pretty good. It still has the problem of like it doesn't make any sense in an Ember Drain deck, but you're not always running an Ember Drain deck, and unlike Ember Forge, this thing just sort of fucking works. Like you're never you're rarely ever going to be using all three floors or even two floors. Um, but certainly you'll have one floor you don't really care to play this on. Even if you are using all three floors, sometimes it still just works fine because you've already put your units down and you're not going to put any more units down on that floor. Either way, it's pretty low investment. Engine upgrade, it's only costs an ember. It consumes itself. Um, al almost always there's no actual downside to losing that pip wherever you play it. And then it just gives you an ember at really no downside. You know, if you think about uh, other cards, similar cards, like Pyrogro is a pretty good card too, but it costs a significant downside of losing two draws the next turn, whereas this, this is really no downside at all. Honestly, it would be S tier, probably if it wasn't in Umbra. And the only reason it's not S tier is because so often I'm going Ember Drain and it just doesn't make sense to add in an Ember Drain deck at all, right? I, I mean, I'm not even kidding you, if this was... If this is any other clan, this is probably an S-tier card. Unfortunately, it just has anti-synergy with the most powerful Umbra strategy, which is Ember Drain. Pretty pretty confident in that. And we got another card that is, I think, just trash. Um, maybe I could be willing to budge on this one. But uh, Excavated Ember... Or sorry, Excavation Eruption. I mean, maybe it's better than Cannibalize. I don't know. I, I know that Cannibalize can at least have much more impact than this card does. This card is 100% useless against Divinity. It's not even that good uh, in the rings leading up to it. It can be okay as the only time I really like it is early on. Uh, then it's basically Ice Tornado that's not permafrosted, but it can give you back Ember, you know, inconsistently, but usually you'll get Ember back. And in that case, it's a pretty powerful play. I mean, that that could almost bump into the C if it just wasn't so utterly useless uh, for the most of the rest of the run. Like, this card falls off so fast. I honestly wish... Uh, we'll, we'll get to Gem Trove eventually here, but like... It used to cost four and hit four times. Um, I think it was a better card back then. Uh, it's still... It would probably be a C card now if it was that. I mean, honestly... I think you could probably just keep it as a 3 cost and make it be a 4 hitter. And, I don't know, maybe it's B tier at that point. It's okay at that point. Still, It's still unreliable. It's still a huge investment you have to make, right? But, because um, if that doesn't, you know, if it just hits Divinity and some tanks, congrats, you spent all your Ember that turn unless you s invested Ember upgrades in this card. Anyway, um... I personally think that Excavation Eruption and Gem Trove either... I think they should be reverted back... Well, Gem, Curve, Gem Trove can remain at 4. Excavation can go back to 4 and I think... Bring it back to 4 hits, maybe even 5 honestly. And make them rare cards. Because what sucks is to start with like Gem Trove or the old Excavation Eruption in your starter when you're Umbra. That's just such a bullshit thing to have in your starter. like. Literally adding a dead weight. Um, it's very annoying, and I think blazing bolts to me would make sense at an uncommon. You know, then you then you if you do start with it, 
it's still technically not worth three ember when you play it the first time but at least you can get it going faster and then that could be a pretty good on common card i feel um, and then move something else i haven't really thought about what other rare you could put in but take your pick basically i think that could be a decent change anyway though i, d I don't think excavation eruption is that good um it's let me down too many times. Uh, if you if you add a card like that, you have to be able to rely on it, and you just can't rely on it. I'd rather have a mind collapse in almost every scenario. Um, and the next one, feast, just another underwhelming card. It only really makes sense in a deck that's going to center around it. Aka, it basically has to be held over or have a very thin high draw situation where you're playing it a lot. You know, this is one of the ways you can almost make morsels work. It, It's not enough still. Like, Holdover Feast is not enough on its own. Which is why it's like C tier. It's like, at best, it's part of a multi-part combo that needs a lot of moving parts to make morsels work. Um, but, you know, you need a lot of uh, generation. But also, you need, you need good morsels. And also, you need something like a Shroud Mitosis or even a Morsel Master to really make use of this. Which again is just a lot of moving parts. It's there's just been a lot of times I've had my hold of her feast even with Shroud Mitosis, and it just isn't enough to beat Divinity. It's crazy how much you need with Morsels to beat Divinity. So you know this this is certainly no Shroud Spike, right? Shroud Spike is the Morsel card you're looking for. It's not Feast, but for the record, Feast can be used. It can also be okay just to spike like an aggressive edible. Uh, as kind of just a one-time tech, you know, that's going to get you 40 damage or whatever. But yeah, that's Feast. I don't love it. I almost hate it. But there's been times when I am looking for Feast, and it's like the only thing that can make a run win, so I can't really say that much about the cards below. Maybe Cave-In, I don't know, but it's so damn rare that that would be the case with Cave-In. The next one we kind of talked about with Excavation Eruption. I mean, it's, for whatever reason, still costs four. I don't know. It, it's like borderline D tier. It's it's pretty good when it works, though, right? Like, when it actually makes sense in a deck, it's amazing. Like, I would say with uh, Volatile Gauge, it's amazing. I mean, Volatile Gauge in general is really good with Umbra. I would also say with uh, Split Anvil, it's pretty amazing. Um, otherwise, I don't know. I guess with a minus two upgrade, it can be okay. Minus two Ember, Value Stone, or whatever. But I don't know. It's like, if you think about it, when you run Primary Umbra one out of 12 times, because there's 12 uncommons. One out of 12 times, you just start with a dead weight. And that's what fucking Gem Trove is. And you're almost never able to justify going to a Magic Ring 2 to even get it down. So... I don't know, I, I'm damn near thinking it should actually go in the D tier. Because really I hardly ever end up picking it because it's just so hard to justify into a deck. You know what? You know what, Gem Trove? You, as I even read this out, you've, you've earned yourself a spot in the D tier. Like, the fact alone that it's just a fucking dead weight in your opener one out of 12 times knocks you down to D tier. And then... Otherwise, you're just so rarely doing anything worth your what you your fucking ember cost is. So, Gem Trove, you're, you're, you're D plus. Congrats, D plus. Now, on the other hand, this is like everything that Gem Trove wishes it was. Grovel. Um, outside of a Morsel deck, it can sometimes work as just a bad damage shield card. But if you have a deck that can make use of both of the things, which is somewhat often. It is one of the better cards in the clan. It's one of the few uncommons that can really be consistently impactful is Grovel. You know, you're getting... Because uh, here's the thing about these things like Cannibalize and Gem Trove. Yeah, they make three of these, this rarity, Morsels, while Grovel only makes two. But how often is having those three Morsels relevant compared to just having two? You know, if it's a Shroud Spike deck, you don't care about the three that much. If it's... Um, other, you know, otherwise, it's like, are you really fitting all three on the floor? I don't know. Maybe you are. I, I find that's rarely the case. So, I think Grovel doesn't even lose any points over Gem Trove and Cannibalize for having less morsels being made. You know, one less morsel being made. You know, the fact of the matter is, it costs two. Uh, 
which is much better than costing three or needing a friendly target to hit on. I think it's solidly in the A tier. I think Grovel is very often a, a kind of a game winning card, um, and it's also just pretty solid otherwise. I wouldn't say it's super, super takeable. I'd say it's never like that much of a downside to have one in your deck, but there are definitely times it probably should be skipped. That being said, though, if you got any sort of need for damage shield or morsels, even even if you don't have that much of a need for morsels, this is going to be pretty good and like patient if you never found anything better. Like that's two chump blockers if he's not trampling. Uh, if you if you keep it under 135 shards, he's not trampling, and those chump blockers are relevant. And even if not, you have the damage shield that you can stack a bit there. I think Gravel's a pretty decent card, one of the few. Then we got a uh, Prism Retrieval. This card's pretty bad. Dare I say, as bad as it is, I think it's a little bit better in the DLC than it was uh, prior. I, I thought it was one of the worst cards in the game prior. It's pretty bad. I wouldn't say it's quite, like, to me, Cave-In and, like, there's probably an F tier that should be created. Actually, can I do that? Um, add a row. Yeah, we should do that. There, there really is a distinction to be made here trash tier like cave in and that that's probably more accurate you know this is our first i feel justification for trash tier the, these cards are so bad but you know cannibalize i i can somewhat find use for it sometimes uh that's probably still just your average d tier low d tier type card but yeah the thing about prism retrieval um it it can be intrinsic now, which makes it a little bit more useful to pull a non-banner unit out, particularly. So if you want like your Endless Imp, Transcend Imp, Tomb, Draft, something like that, then Prism Retrieval is your friend. Uh, it's even potentially better than Channel Song for that because it doesn't add health, which is an upside. The X cost of it is kind of a joke though, right? Like it's... You, uh... <laughs> I don't know, um, what a measly, uh, what a measly attack per ember rate that is, you know. I've never really had that portion of it be relevant. It's really just, this is here to pull a card out of your deck, that's it. But still, overall, in most runs, it's fucking useless. Um, it's, it sucks to start with, too, in my opinion. Um, you're rarely able to make it be that good for your early game. That's true of a lot of these, like Fee, like <laughs> almost all of these are pretty damn sad to start with. It's like, oh yay, I started with Cave-In, Amber Forge, like the only time it would be useful is probably Ring 1, just because it's a body, an extra body that might be good for like Primordium or something, but even then it's pretty bad. Cannibalize. I don't know, most of these just suck to start with. Now we get to the final card, it's the only one uh, that I'm going to be putting in the S tier, and that's Void Binding. Now this card's pretty good. This card is just amazing. Uh, might even be more preferable to me in a lot of cases than Furnace Tap, as far as just a good Ember Drain card goes. You know, Furnace Tap's only better when I absolutely need that multi-strike, but if it's like... I don't know, like a sweeper, or even something like a Animus of Will, or something that tramples. A lot of the time, I'd just rather have Void Binding. Um, the nice thing about Void Binding is, if you don't find your perils, you don't really find an quote unquote Ember, Drek, uh, Ember Drain deck. You can just slap a minus uh, one Ember on it and hold over, and that will work just fine. It's tough into things like Diligent or Scourgefell, of course, but uh, it's not undoable. You're just going to need some Pyre Health buffer for sure into those fights. But outside of those fights, it's incredibly doable. And you you just focus on zero costing as much as you can in the deck. Zero cost the cards you care about playing, and then just remove the rest. And it's totally fine that you can Hellvent that a few times, like... Uh, that's a perfectly fine strategy. I, I think in the best case scenario, though, it's obviously when you have an Ember Drain deck, because then you can do things like double stack it 
and then it's just super high impact when you play it. You get um, 12 rage, 4 damage shield. Uh, if you just knock it down back to 1 ember, that's great, or even a minus 2 it to 0, either of those works. Very, very strong plays, and uh, the nice thing about it is you can put it on either a backliner or a frontliner, and uh, even in, if you didn't want to go super into ember drain, like when you're still trying to figure your deck out, you can always just put it on a morsel or something. Get it to chump block or just do some extra damage, or both. Um, then you're not ever drained the next turn. Really, really powerful card. One of the best cards in the clan, in my opinion. Um, the, honestly, it, it even though even though these cards are in A and this is an S, there, there's a significant gap between Void Binding and this A tier. Like Void Binding is just a much better a much better card. This is the only card I'm just super happy to see at the Umbra Uncommon tier. It really is. It's the only one I'm ever just desperate to find on an average, you know, run. But anyway, anyway, that'll do it. As you can see here, this is just a sad, sad pool. You know, when you play Umbra Primary, half the time you're happy because you got Primordium anyway, but half the time you're sad because you got Penumbra. Add Salt in the Wound that you're almost never starting with something good at the, uh, as your one uncommon offering. Just most of these cards are gonna suck, and they're never gonna do anything for you, ever. And they're just another fucking dead weight that you gotta remove. So, that's, that's, you know, I, I, I could argue this is, this is a more, this is more of a downside than even their banner units are to the clan. I could probably argue that, because I can, I can usually avoid Umber Banners, right? It's only a few runs where you're ever forced into doing Umber Banners. But you can't avoid the fact that you have three whole rings where almost all of your, uh, you know, picks are at the uncommon tier and almost all of them suck and you get one of these included in your deck by default half the time with umbra so pretty sad pretty sad they, they could buff every damn card on here honestly other than maybe the the a to s tier and they should honestly anyway that'll do it for this one as always let me know what your thoughts are thanks for watching and until next time peace